Hey scientists, today we're going to be taking a look at photosynthesis. You have access to this in a digital Google document form. We are going to be talking about how energy is stored, as well as the process and the elements that are involved in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which autotrophs Ma uh, manufacture their own food. So manufacture means to make. Okay, so autotrophs, auto does it by itself. Troph is talking about your food or energy. So it's able to make its own food in the form of glucose. This is sugar using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. I'm gonna go ahead and put a star here because these are the major players here in order for your autotroph to perform photosynthesis. Energy conversion. So this means to change. Okay, to convert something is to change it. During photosynthesis, light energy from the sun is converted or changed over into chemical energy. which is your glucose, that can now be stored and transported in plants. If you're not sure about transported, transported where exactly, you're gonna be transporting that all over your plant, from your stems, right, from your roots, all the way up your stems, or your shoots, through your leaves, okay, and then back down. In transport, we had learned about xylem and phloem. These are your structural components that allow your plant to transport nutrients such as glucose or even nitrogen, uh, water, okay, all around your plant. And it was very similar, we had discussed, that it's similar to your body, your own body's circulatory system. Chemical energy is talking about your, your elements that are involved in glucose. Remember that that is CHO from our biomolecules unit. CHO for glucose. Because that is, um, those are your elements that are needed to make carbohydrates. Reactants of photosynthesis. So we're talking about our chemical reactant reactions your reactants are what go into into a um an ex a reaction excuse me i almost said an experiment okay so my reactants what goes in in order for you to do photosynthesis this is carbon dioxide co2 and your plant is going to get co2 from the atmosphere so that is out here in your surroundings H2O is water. And you're going to get this from either the soil or, again, your atmosphere. Because you can have, depending especially on where you are on your um, geographical location-wise, how much moisture is generally in your area. And then light. Usually a solar energy from, you guessed it, the sun. So all three of these are your reactants. I must have all three in order for me to do photosynthesis. Once I'm able to perform photosynthesis, I now have products. Products is what I get out of it. Okay, so once I do photosynthesis, what are my products? What do I get out of it? Well, for starters, I'm going to get glucose. As we had mentioned, glucose is sugar. The chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And this is noted as sugar by autotrophs and heterotrophs for energy. Next, I'm going to get oxygen. This is a gas, O2. This is actually a waste product of photosynthesis, but you guys know that that's definitely not waste for us. We need that. Chemical equation. So this is what your chemical equation would look like. My reactants, right, what goes into my 
uh, reaction is CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay, so, but how many do I need? I need six. Six CO2 plus six H2O. I need light energy. Okay. And out of it, my products, I am now going to get C6H12O6. That is your glucose and oxygen 6O2. This is a balanced equation, meaning I have the same amount of elements on either side. However, you can see that they have now been rearranged. Remember that our number one rule in science is that matter cannot be created or destroyed. I can only move it. Think about it this way. Reactants are like ingredients that are going into whichever dish you are planning to make. Let's pretend we're making a cake. Some things I might use for a cake include eggs and maybe flour. My product would be the cake. However, if I asked you, oh, you know what? I really need those eggs back. <laughs> well, you can't just take the eggs directly out of my cake because now they have been rearranged as a product, which is the cake. Okay, so I can rearrange my elements to form a product. So here I started with your coefficient, six, which goes in front, and it's going to carry over just like a simple math problem. Six C's. So I have six carbons. Six with two, though, however, here. So I now have, I have a lot more oxygens. <clears throat> I'm going to have 12 oxygens there. Six H, but two. So I have 12 hydrogens. And then another six oxygens here. So when you move over, I have six carbons. Yes, that checks out. 12 hydrogens. Yes, I do. Oxygens. I had six oxygens here. 12 oxygens. Yes. So this is a balanced equation. Okay, no elements can just disappear. If you start with a certain amount of elements, you're going to end with a certain amount of elements. Just an FYI. Especially, this is especially important when you move on to chemistry. Okay. We're moving forward. Factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis. So what is this talking about? Factors, these are any things environmental wise um, around in their particular area, okay? Uh, affecting the rate, either how fast or slow photosynthesis is able to happen. Light intensity is your first one. Light intensity, very high intensity can damage, this is sad, damage the chlorophyll, okay? So if you leave a plant or an autotrophic organism in direct uh, intense light for an, ex an extended amount of time, you can damage your chlorophyll. And this is going to slow down your rate of photosynthesis. Next is availability of raw materials, right? I need access to carbon dioxide. I need water. Okay, so I need those right here. Those were my reactants. If I do not have reactants, I cannot make products. Look back to my uh, cake, the cake example. If I don't have my ingredients, cannot make the cake. Next, temperature. Optimum temperature is anywhere between 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Number four, the color of light. Green light is reflected. Next we have where does cytophotosynthesis happen? So speaking of that green light, right, your chloroplasts contain chlorophyll. And those are what give it the green color because green light is being reflected. If 
Photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast of plant cells. It primarily occurs in the leaves. Some leaves are very broad, meaning wide and open to collect more sunlight. Okay, so uh, their shape definitely tells you something about their nature. Chlorophyll is a green pigment that absorbs light. Chlorophyll has two L's. Thylakoids. I think my doodle went in the backside here. Thylakoids are the sac-like membranes that contain chlorophyll. A granum is a stack of thylakoids. The stroma is the liquid-filled space inside the chloroplast. So much like a cytoplasm, stroma is the liquid-filled space inside a chloroplast. There are two phases of photosynthesis, but before we get there, I found my doodle for your chloroplast. A your stack is a granum. An individual is a thylakoid. And all of the watery space inside the chloroplast is your stroma. To type in your boxes on the Google Doc, make sure that you double click. Okay, now we can move forward on to the two phases of photosynthesis. So it's a two step uh, or two possible pathways for photosynthesis. Our first option is the light dependent phase. Light dependent phase of photosynthesis takes place in the thylakoids. So light is going to be absorbed by your chlorophyll and it's going to be converted or changed into usable energy, ATP. And we've seen ATP before, that adenosine triphosphate. Some ATP is going to be used to split the water molecule, H2O. So once I break it, I'm going to break it down into hydrogen and oxygen. I'm going to split it. So I'm breaking those bonds, and that's going to take some energy. Oxygen, that's a gas, O2, is going to be released into the atmosphere. Number two, light independent phase. This is also known as the Calvin cycle. Light independent. So this means with the absence of light, does not depend on light. This takes place in the stroma. That is that watery space inside your chloroplast. It can happen in the light or in the dark. ATP from previous phase, so ATP that I've made from the light dependent phase, and hydrogen from the water molecule that was split combined with carbon, uh, carbon dioxide from your atmosphere. So once I combine it, 
I have now resulting, or it will now result in glucose. That is C6H12O6. So I'm still making sugar. However, I'm doing an alternative route. So this is what it would look like. So this is a picture of a chloroplast. For my light dependent reactions, water comes in, light is used, oxygen is released. For your light independent reaction or your Calvin cycle, Carbon dioxide is going to be coming in. I'm going to be combining that. I'm going to use ATP energy. And I'm still going to be able to make some sugars. C6H12O6 glucose. What do we understand so far? Number one, what is produced during photosynthesis? During photosynthesis, your plant's number one goal is to make its own food. So what is that source of food? Glucose. Glucose produced like product, glucose, is the product, I'm gonna run out of room here. I'm gonna abbreviate it as photosyn, photosynthesis. Number two, what is the importance of producing glucose? So why do I need to make glucose? So if you're not sure why you would need to use photosynthesis and why do you need to get glucose? It says photosynthesis is the process by which autotrophs make their own food. So this is their food source. What is the importance of producing glucose? Glucose production. Glucose production is the main source of food for your autotrophs. Okay, so without it, they would not be able to provide for themselves. They wouldn't be able to survive. And that is the end of our notes with photosynthesis. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.